Hello, Tim from Fair Play now on the 2nd of June 2022 and it's a Thursday and here in the UK at least we have got a four day weekend. We've got two bank holidays tomorrow, today and tomorrow and then obviously the weekend and it's all to do with the celebrations of this uh, 70th uh, jubilee for the Queen. Not that I'm sort of particularly into that kind of thing uh, or her or the royals so I'm just going to take this uh, time off as a little bit of me time bit of time with myself and Lorraine and to celebrate the country rather than uh, the sort of uh, people who supposedly uh, run it so that is going to be basically my stance and what I thought I'd do is just talk about wrong'uns, as this video is called. And this has been inspired by a talk by Marty Bucko, a video that he put up recently, where he was talking about Matt Letizia and how you can basically tell how he's a good guy by his actions. And... I think that goes for both good people like him and also for wrong uns. And even long before you get wind of, you know, real hard evidence that they're wrong uns, you can often tell just by their actions, the things they do, the things they don't do as well. And I saw a documentary a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, about Jimmy Savile. And I'm sure you know who he is, even if you're not in the UK. He's basically sort of uh, Britain's answer to Jeffrey Epstein. You know, if you don't know who he is, uh, passed away about a decade ago. And then kind of it all came out about what he, he'd kind of been up to for many, I say many years, many decades in actual fact. But in this documentary, we'll kind of leave aside all of the kind of wrong stuff he did. Uh, and just, I'm going to relate a thing that I sort of heard in this documentary, which kind of, could, you could kind of tell that he was wrong, and even, even if he didn't know about all of his sort of really bad stuff. And what they said in this documentary is that uh, he was a single guy, and he lived in, I don't know, a house or a flat somewhere up north. And this person who knew him well was saying that he didn't, he never cooked at home. He didn't even have any cooking utensils or anything like that. He'd always just go down to a local cafe or sort of pub or whatever it was and just expect them to give him free food. He was always blagging free food and drink from uh, everybody. And he did that with pretty much everything, um, even the Rolls Royces you saw him driving around in, they, they weren't his, he had just kind of blagged them. And when you consider that it, this is a very wealthy person we're talking about, he earned sort of lots and lots of money, and yet he couldn't even be bothered sort of paying for meals uh, or sort of food or anything. And yeah, that that's just not right behavior is it it's not something the likes of me or you would do so you hear these kind of weird stories about people and another one they told about him in this uh, documentary is he he would charge three thousand pounds to turn up at something like a fate you know a village fate somewhere uh or village fair to uh sort of do a little talk and what have you and uh, the, these people were saying how he would turn up at these things and charge £3,000 and then he, he'd only be there for about five or ten minutes. He'd give us a little speech and then he'd, off he'd go and it was uh, just a total rip-off. And again, that's not something you do, is it? You, you know, If you're going to charge that sort of money, at least spend the whole afternoon there and go around and sort of talk to everybody. Uh, well, not that you'd want the likes of him talking uh, to you on a thought or to anyone you know, but you know what I mean, don't you? It's just not right behaviour. 
And then I saw another documentary a few years ago, probably oh, uh, three or four years ago, and it was all about people who had wa uh, worked for the royal family, various members of the royal family, kind of ex-members of the royal household staff. And this one guy, I remember his story uh, about Prince Charles, and apparently when he went to Scotland, can't remember the place that he used to go in Scotland, or he does go to in Scotland for his hunting, but apparently uh, after he's come back in from hunting, he sort of comes in and then he immediately wants and expects to be served immediately uh, a couple of boiled eggs and a glass of whiskey. That's apparently his favourite post-hunt kind of snack. And this guy was saying that they would have to, in the kitchens, kind of judge when he was likely to be back put a couple of boiled eggs on to boil and then if he didn't show up they'd have to sling those two eggs in the bin and then put another two in and boil those up and then if he still didn't turn up they'd go in the bin and this is all just so you know when he did arrive they could immediately serve him with two piping hot boiled eggs which is what he wanted and expected and this bloke relating the story said uh, they could easily go through 50 eggs into the bin and this is serving a bloke who is supposedly environmentally friendly and doesn't like waste so uh yeah it's just not again right behavior it's a sign of a wrong one as far as i'm concerned uh, just like that jimmy savile stuff what is you know you hear these stories and it's just a sign of a wrong one because any decent person, I don't care how high and mighty and falutin, highfalutin you are, how rich you are, uh, surely you could just have some sort of system where you could just signal ahead that you're on your way back, even if this was sort of uh, in the days before uh, mobile phones or if it's an area with poor reception, uh, surely they could have had one, you know, some sort of system or even, you know, Boiled eggs don't take very long. They could have at least had the pan of water boiling away and uh, had someone sort of seen them sort of coming up the driveway and into the house and, yeah, put the eggs on. And how would it affect him? How, how much would it affect his life if he just had to wait a minute or two for his eggs to come out? I, You and me we'd be quite happy to wait a minute or two, but not this joker. So, total wrong one, isn't he? And even the, you know, people like the Queen herself, um, okay, I don't know any sort of stories like that about her, but you can kind of tell what she's all about from more of the stuff she doesn't do. And the, these people, they're supposedly, they head up charities and, uh, things like that but I don't hear stories about her sort of putting up uh, you know millions of pounds to personally help out uh, you know whatever worthy cause there might be at any one time uh, you know I don't hear stories about her sort of fronting up uh, you know half a billion billion pounds to uh, build a new hospital for instance and if I was in her position what what I would do is I would sort of say right I'm going to sort of put up uh, whatever sum of money she could comfortably afford uh, 100 million 500 million which I'm sure she could easily comfortably afford every few years and then just turn around and say to all the other billionaires and uh, sort of aristocracy and sort of royalty etc say you know i'm putting up this amount um why don't you match it or beat it or at least do something and she could put an, an initiative like that together every few years and build a beautiful state-of-the-art sort of brand new hospital massive hospital somewhere uh just from an, an initiative like that but no um sort of nothing like that ever seems to happen does it uh, instead, she just sort of takes her money from the taxpayer and 
kind of uh, just expects us to uh, build our own hospitals out of taxpayer money as well. So uh, again, that it's not what the likes of you and me would do. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it's just another sign of a wrong one. So yeah, just a few thoughts there. And just circling back to finish off on a more positive note, um, yeah, you know, sort of taking this opportunity of this so-called uh, jubilee long weekend to uh, uh, sort of knock the royals a little bit. But I'm going to finish this video on a positive note. And Marty Bucko's message. I'll leave a link to his video in the description box below, by the way, and in the comments section because it's on YouTube. And he was saying about Matt Letizia, this Southampton footballer uh, from a few years ago, and he just remained loyal to Southampton Football Club uh, all of his playing career, which is something almost no one does. He could have moved on in his heyday to much bigger, bigger clubs. Southampton's kind of a middling club, uh, quite well up there but it's certainly not in the top top flight it's not like your Liverpool's and Manchester Manchester United's your Chelsea's etc and he had offers from I think he definitely had an offer from Chelsea and he could have moved there and probably doubled his salary tripled it whatever but no he wanted to remain loyal to the football club that gave him his big break and he stayed uh, with Southampton foregoing any sort of vast increases in money uh, just out of loyalty and that again speaks volumes uh, for sort of a person doesn't it you can tell from that uh, that he's a good and and you can tell from the actions of these other people I've talked about that they're wrong -uns. and yeah I would say just look at people's actions rather than, the, than and their deeds rather than their words and um sort of what have you so i've got quite a bit of uh stuff off my chest there didn't, didn't i so uh uh i just really letting rip with a few thoughts so gonna have a barbecue tonight even though the weather is hopefully it'll be uh okay so uh i'm gonna fire up the barbecue for the first time this year and uh, we've got uh, a guest around so we're gonna have a nice little dinner and I'll be back tomorrow. Tim for Fair Play now. Thanks for watching.